Hello, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is where you get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news that challenges for China just seem to keep on mounting. But first, central bankers are off to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, for their annual shindig, which starts at the end of the week. But they will be stressing over the state of the world economy and the loneliness of having to shoulder all the economic heavy lifting, mostly caused by misguided American policy. In China, their central government tax collections are undergoing considerable change. In the first seven months of 2019, overall tax collections rose only 3.1%. Consumption tax collections, however, were up more than 20%, but income tax collections slumped more than 30%. And their central bank unveiled a key reform to their interest rate mechanism, a move aimed at lowering interest costs for businesses struggling with their cooling economy. The existing benchmark interest rates will be replaced with the loan prime rate, which is based on real-world bank lending prices as a reference for banks when pricing new loans. In Hong Kong, there were more demonstrations over the weekend with a major defiance of Beijing, but this time there was no tear gas from the police. Meanwhile, the Hong Kong government sharply cut its 2019 growth forecast to a range of 0 to 1% this year, down from 2 to 3%. It also announced a stimulus package of almost $4 billion. In Singapore, key exports fell by double digits for the fifth straight month in July, although the pace of the decline moderated, raising the possibility that the worst may be over. Still, the outlook looks bearish. Growth estimates for 2019 have been slashed to 0 to 1%, as exports are likely to fall by as much as 9% over the whole year. Malaysia is, however, seeing rising economic growth, recording a second quarter increase of 4.9%, up from 4.5% in the previous quarter. In Australia, following the Hain inquiry into financial services, their parliament set up an inquiry into the auditing industry, especially the large audit firms. We're set to receive submissions until the end of September, but this has been now extended to late October due to the interest of parties other than the audit firms themselves. Cosy, management-friendly, endlessly extended and highly lucrative audit relationships have been under scrutiny worldwide and will undoubtedly get also closely examined in this Aussie inquiry. In the US, housing starts fell for the third straight month in July amid a steep decline in the construction of multifamily housing units. And consumer sentiment in the US, as measured by a widely watched survey, fell sharply to its lowest level of the year. Negative reactions to the latest tariff moves were a key reason cited by survey respondents. Wall Street ended up 1.4% on Friday, but that's still a small weekly decline. European markets were up a similar amount, but they too have ended up with a weekly decline. Both markets were up on rumours that major German stimulus is being planned rather than any economic turnaround. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now at 1.56%, a decline from this time last week of 18 basis points on top of the 33 basis point fall the previous two weeks. Gold is now at $1,513 an ounce, and that's up $17 for the week. US oil prices are a little firmer today at just on $55 a barrel. The Brent benchmark is up to $58.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar is a little lower at 64.3 US cents. But that is equal to the low of October 2016. And prior to that, you need to go back to January 2016 when it's been this low before. It is a consequence of the low OCR. On the cross rates, we're down to 94.8 Aussie cents. Against the euro, we're up to 57.9 euro cents. That sets the trade-weighted index back to 69.7. I'm David Chaston. That was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.